activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. I only wear these for looks, by the way. Uh, over the next two or three lessons, uh, we're going to be looking at the trials of, that Jesus went through after his arrest. And, uh, and then, obviously, right before he was put to death. What we're looking at is something that took place just within hours from the time he's crucified. His, 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 uh, his trials, and there were six of those trials, the whole, all six of them lasted around three, the whole thing lasted around three, maybe four hours. It was just one right after the other. And it was, it was all within this early morning. And one of the things that will become very, very transparent, even as we look at, at these, the first three trials today, were what a sham they were. They were a complete violation of justice. And I'll point some of that out and show you why they were such a violation of justice. Uh, but it begins with uh, a verse, that, the verse that we saw last uh, Sunday, but we're looking at it from a different perspective now. In John 18, uh, starting with verse 13, first they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Now, uh, I, I, Annas, as you, as you recall, and I mentioned this last Sunday, Annas was, the Jews considered him to be the high priest because he had been appointed by uh, the Romans as the high priest, but then the Romans got real antsy about one man having so much power. So they started appointing a new high priest on a regular basis. But the Jews were so incensed by that that they negotiated a deal. And so what happened was it was Annas' sons that became the high priests. He had five sons. And Caiaphas, who was the high priest, appointed high priest at this time, was his son-in-law. So it was all in the family, but Annas was kind of the one that was, uh, was behind the curtain pulling the strings because the Jews themselves considered the high priest to be high priest for life. So they, even though he was appointed high priest by the Romans, they considered him their high priest and believed that he was their high priest until death. And just because the Romans considered the other sons and, and son-in-law to be high priest uh, wasn't they didn't really care about that that much. I mean, they had to go along with it, but they really considered Annas to be more in charge. And so they first take Jesus uh, uh, to Annas. The two, there were two, there were three trials. The first one and the third one were rather informal and uh, certainly unjust and illegal. Uh, the first one, which was before Annas, um, was, uh, was the one that we're going to take a look at right now. This was more of a preliminary investigation. Uh, probably similar to what happens today when somebody is arrested and brought into a police station. Annas questioned Jesus about the people who held his views and about the nature of his teaching probably, and they were trying to build a case that could justify sending it to the Roman government, demanding Jesus' death. And so when at the, the gathering point before Annas was to bring Jesus there to, to make sure that they could get all of their charges uh, lined up, and they wanted to make sure that they had uh, their story straight, all of that stuff. They, they brought in uh, the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin, I'll, I'll explain that in just a moment. They brought in the Sanhedrin, which were the, 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 the super religious leaders, <clears throat> to make sure that everybody was, was on the same page for this thing. And so it was kind of the preliminary um, uh, step in, in, in what would lead to the second trial. So they're trying to build a case that uh, they could send to the Roman government. And this tactic apparently gave Caiaphas who knew what was going on, obviously, and was the appointed high priest by the Roman government, they gave him time to assemble the uh, Sanhedrin rather quickly. Now, that was what happens with Annas, and we don't know how long it took, but I'm, I'm assuming, assuming it probably took, uh, by the time Jesus got there, um, it probably took some maybe 45 minutes or so, 30 to 45 minutes. Then there probably would have been a waiting period where they then would send him over to Caiaphas, who was still in the same complex. In fact, it was the high priest's uh, home. It was really a complex where he lived. Generally, those complexes were square, and in the middle there was a courtyard. And so they were probably in this rather large courtyard. And uh, uh, Annas would probably have lived on one wing and Caiaphas on, on one of the other wings. So that's where they are, and once Annas was convinced that they had a case, they proceeded with this second trial, which was the trial with Caiaphas. Now, that particular trial 
required uh, by the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrins were the ones that required the trial with Caiaphas in order for them to submit charges before the Roman government. The Roman government would only entertain charges that came from the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin could only have charges brought about that had been reviewed by whoever the high priest was as far as the Roman government was concerned. In this case, it would have been Caiaphas. Now, interestingly, there were no Pharisees at this particular trial. Uh, only Sanhedrin. Uh, the Sanhedrin was a body that enforced religious law. That was their duty. That was their job, essentially. And the Sanhedrin was made up uh, primarily of Sadducees, not Pharisees, because they had different beliefs. The primary difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees was that the Sadducees were far more conservative far more conservative than the Pharisees. And they believed only in the written law of Moses. And that was it. That was their only law. If it wasn't in the law of Moses, then it wasn't acceptable. So they saw the law of Moses as authoritative. But while, while they believed that, and the Pharisees also believed in the law of Moses, the Pharisees also believed that they could enact new religious uh, law in order to protect, that was their thought, protect the concept of doctrinal truth or doctrinal purity. So the Pharisees would enact new laws, not the law of Moses. They would come up with their own laws, like you can't walk more than so many paces on the Sabbath and, and things like that. They would come up with these laws that um, enforce, they considered it, in, that it enforced the doctrinal purity. So that was kind of the difference between the, the, uh, the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees. Uh, Jesus, by the way, uh, drove them both nuts because his interpretation of Old Testament truth drove the Sanhedrin crazy because he was taking what they considered to be the law of Moses, which is sacrosanct, and it is, and he was basically reinterpreting it, uh, but, uh, not the way that they had interpreted it, but he was giving them insight to what it really meant and what it was really all about. And as he revealed what the purpose of the law was and what the law was really all about and how it, it was to be done, it drove the Sanhedrin nuts. And at the same time, he was, he was all over the Pharisees because they were making new law and because they, were, they, they had their own traditions and their own way of doing things and, and they were despising the people and they were hypocrites. And so, so the Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, were really, really, both of them, just uh, uh, upset with Jesus. This whole thing really gives us some insight to the religious politics of the day. Uh, the Sanhedrin bore the power, and the high priest was most likely a Sadducee, and the Pharisees were focused on Jewish doctrine. The Sanhedrin were essentially the legal branch of the religious structure, and therefore more aligned with Roman law, since uh, they had to operate under that law, and uh, they had to align their religious practices as much as possible under Roman law. Uh, as a result, they bore more power, and in this particular case, it would be critical to get these charges against Jesus passed through the Roman courts in order to have him killed, and so it would have to come from the Sanhedrin. The Gospel of Matthew gives us a little more insight to uh, this trial under Caiaphas. So let's take a look at it. In Matthew chapter 26, in those days, then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now, remember last week we saw that John was also there. Matthew doesn't mention that in his, in his uh, uh, version of, of what happened. But John had gone on. He had gone in to see what was going on. And Peter had to wait until he got permission to come in. Verse 59, now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At, la at last, two came forward and said, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And then the high priest stood up and said, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so, which by the way was, was just a, a colloquialism. You have said so was a way of saying yes. You know, you said the truth. You, you spoke the, abs the absolute truth there. 
So Jesus says, you have said so. But I will tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has uttered, blas- he has uttered blasphemy for saying that. Why? You know, what do you mean you're going to come back with God and sit, on his, sit at the right hand of God and come back with him in glory? That's blasphemous. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? And they answered, he deserves death. And that was the Sanhedrin then that was, that was issuing this order, that he deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now, the purpose of Jesus' trials was to find some legal basis on which to condemn him to death. Judas' testimony was crucial to the religious leaders. But he was nowhere to be found. And so they had to find some other witnesses to testify against Jesus. Now, it's really important to understand. They knew that they had a rather tenuous case. I mean, why would you put somebody to death just simply because he had been blasphemous? I mean, we wouldn't do that in this country. But they'll do that in some countries you know of. And so it's very important. That it's, it's a law. You do, do, you do not blaspheme, blaspheme our God. And so they'll put you to death, death for that. And so we have a little trouble really putting our, getting our head around that um, in this country, but that's the way it is in, in Muslim countries. And uh, fortunately, it's not that way in Israel, but it is that way in some countries. And so if you kind of look at it from that perspective, you'll understand how this could actually happen, that they could just... They could come up with some kind of a rule that he was that would cause him to be put to death. And so all of the other things that he had said and done, the miracles and, and, and healing on the Sabbath and breaking those laws, those religious laws, weren't enough to put him to death. And so they had to come up with something that was worth putting him to death. And when they found something that they could call blasphemous, then they felt they had a case. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.